Legacy Alliance. But before we get started with the press conference, I just want to make a, a couple announcements. The first is that we're here to talk about implementation of the medical marijuana law that the voters passed in 2012. So this event is not related to certain bills that are being heard in the judiciary community today around taxation and regulation of marijuana for recreational use. This is a separate issue. We're here to talk about medical marijuana. And finally, I just want to say that uh, after this press conference, I'm going to say a few words. The patients will speak for a little bit. And after that, we're going to deliver a letter to the governor. First, we're open for questions from the floor. Then we're going to travel down this hallway here, take the elevator down to the first floor, and deliver a letter. So let's get started. As I said, my name is Matt Allen. I'm executive director of the Massachusetts Patient Advocacy Alliance, which is a coalition of medical marijuana patients, family members, medical professionals, and public health groups that's been working to promote safe access to medical marijuana for patients in the Commonwealth. We're the group that backed the medical marijuana initiative, and since then we've been working to make sure implementation of the law works for patients and communities. Today we'll hear from patients and family members of patients with MS, ALS, epilepsy, severe chronic pain, ulcerative colitis, and other serious conditions, urging the governor to advance implementation on two fronts. Number one, we're asking the governor to register dispensaries to operate immediately. It's been over 100 days since the statute mandated that the state do this. I want to emphasize that all registrations are probationary. They can be revoked at any time. And if they can be revoked if operational issues come up or if it's determined that applicants are unsuitable for any reason. So there is no reason for further delays. It's time to finish the verification process and issue the registrations to these dispensaries. We particularly need a dispensary in Boston due to its population, proximity to public transportation, and the density of medical facilities here. So we hope the city will work with operators to get their doors open as soon as possible. We also need dispensaries in other metro areas, and we're concerned about access in Berkshire, Franklin, Dukes, and Nantucket counties, where at this point, no dispensaries are slated to open. And this brings us to our second point, which is the need to change the caregiver regulation. If the caregiver system, which is the home cultivation system, was functional, that would be a real option for patients in areas where implementation of dispensaries is delayed. But however, right now, caregivers can only cultivate for one patient, and this system just does not work under this restriction. It means that a patient who's given a medical marijuana recommendation then has to find a caregiver and wait three to four months for that medicine to grow. In Rhode Island and Maine, caregivers can cultivate for up to five patients. So there's an existing network of experienced, reliable, and compliant caregivers that patients can easily connect with. Furthermore, there's not much difference in costs if a caregiver is supplying for just one patient versus five patients. So expanding that regulation will bring savings to patients. The caregiver system will not be a viable option unless this regulation is changed. So now we will hear from some, from some medical marijuana patients and family members, starting with Steve Sailing, who's from Chelsea and is sitting here to my left. My name is Steve Salem, and I had a very active life until eight years ago. That is when I found out I have ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. The nerves that control my muscles have mysteriously withered and died. No one knows why, and there is no cure. I have to speak with this computer because my tongue and lips became too weak to speak. Through lack of use, my muscles are wasting away. The discomfort of my severe spasticity can be terribly uncomfortable. I use a liquefied form of cannabis called a tincture. I put this tincture of cannabis in the feeding tube in my stomach. I have tried baclofen, but that only exacerbated my weakness. The cannabis tincture quickly allows my body to relax and my head to remain clear. Paralysis is not so bad if you're not driving in agony. My situation is complicated by the fact that I live in a nursing home. They support the law that overwhelmingly passed 18 months ago, but we have licensed nurses caring for us so they cannot administer black market drugs. 
I struggle to continue using a vaporizer as my breathing has gotten weaker, and because using the feeding tube is a nursing procedure, I am often left with quality medicine that no one can give me because it doesn't come from a dispensary. I depend on the dispensaries being open before the inevitable progression of my disease forces the nurses to choose between my well-being and their license. We're talking about months here, not years. Also, the well-intentioned but completely arbitrary patient caregiver ratios have the effect of nullifying the law for a great many people. How am I supposed to have two caregivers provide my medical marijuana care when I need help just to move my hand? I understand the need for responsible regulation, but the limitations need to provide viable access to people like me. Regulations must be changed to find a better balance between the perceived risk and the very real danger that the law will leave people to suffer needlessly. Governor Patrick, I am asking for your support once again. Thank you all for your time.